coming at you live from DNHQ in beautiful South Pasadena, California. This is the Blue Heaven Podcast. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? My name is Clint. You can find me as Real FRG on Twitter and Instagram, and we're back. We are back. We took a uh, sabbatical. Or we're going to call it a sabbatical. No, no. It's uh, what, what do they call it in, in football? I mean, basketball. It's a uh, the, the, the thing. That LeBron James made famous. Work, uh, load management. Load management. This is Brooke. Kawhi made it famous, actually. My bad. <laughs> Guys, my name is Brooke. You can find me at BrookeMe3 on Twitter and Instagram. On today's show, uh, well. Stuff. We got some stuff. We got some stuff going on. We uh, we handled those snakes out in the desert uh, at Dodger Stadium East, I guess is what we're calling it. I don't really know what else to call it. And now we get to head to Dodger Stadium South for a big series with the Padres. A lot of people make it a big series. We'll talk about whether or not we think it's a big series because... It's the Padres. It's Padres. It's the division rival. We'll see how it goes. The Dodgers have a little bit of a pitching issue percolating. Let's get it percolating. So we'll talk about that in a little while. Or actually, probably, I think that's the first thing we got uh, planned out. The post-sticky era begins for baseball, and it's already been a little awkward if you've been watching any baseball here early-ish on Monday. All that and more on today's episode of Blue Haven. Mm-mm. Before we get into the show, we got to remind you this is a podcast, so uh, you know if you want to subscribe, that'd be cool. Hit that uh, notification bell on on iTunes, I guess. Can you do that? <laughs> It's a podcast. We're on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play. It's not Google Play. Sorry, I found out it's Google Podcasts, but we do still exist there. So that's it's a It's called thing. Google Podcasts? I guess. Oh, or something like that. Me. But uh, yeah, we're on all the spots that your podcasts live and exist. We live there. We're also on uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash Dodgers Nation TV. Please subscribe there. We'd be very happy that you did that. Hear, we would. I'm hearing a lot of noises. Yeah, I don't know what that noise is. I think uh, we're being invaded. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Guys, don't forget, this is a live show. We are here in the flesh until that noise kills us. And until it does, we will be chatting with you guys. So drop into the comments. Let us know where you're repping Dodgers Nation tonight. You might have to pull some of the early ones because I pulled the comments up late. But Ricky Bobby Trujillo over on Facebook says, Welcome to Monday, fellas. Ricky Bobby, we appreciate you. We are uh, have we are have more energy. <laughs> yeah. Load management. Yeah. Leslie Taylor's the first comment I got on here. Says, hi, guys. Happy Monday. How you doing, Leslie? Thanks for hanging out with us. Matthew Thomas is on here. Happy Monday. We got Brian. Brian Balding. You know, we don't, we're not sponsored by Keeps, but we thanks, uh, we thanks you for hanging out. He says, let's go LA Dodgers fans. Uh, Scott, our friend Scott Novak is in the stream on YouTube, checking in from Missoula. Richards is South Pasadena, home of Dave Roth. Is that David Lee Roth? I don't. I don't know. If well, if your Dave friends, Roth is. if your friends with him, he's Dave Roth. Dave Roth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. Or Dave Roth IRA. Nathan's checking in. Says, "What's up?" Raymond is in the stream. He says, "We back, boys." Yeah, we're actually. I'm, I'm quasi excited about today. Thursday would have been just bad. Oh man, you guys would have hated us on Thursday. We just, we just don't do things anymore. <laughs> We were locked indoors for like a year and a half for the greater part. And on top of that, I would say our job generally has us homebodies. So we don't know how to be out in the public, let alone two days in a row. We had to do stuff. It was a whole thing. So we're like, yeah, not about that. Thing. So if you see us in public, just tread very lightly. <laughs> I, I would say approach us like a, uh, you know. With Michelada in hand. Yeah. An animal in a tank. No. That's like very scared of its surroundings. <laughs> you know, A caged bear. I don't know. These are, Be very gentle. I really want to see this. What kind of animals? Is the animal driving the tank? Is, is that what no, you mean? Not a tank, like a fish tank. No. Oh. <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah, no. That's Does a different... the animal have control of the uh, of like the turret? That's a different story. That's uh, like a... Hey, Hollywood, you got a new movie right there. <laughs> Just pitched it Executive to you. Executive producer, Brooke Smith. Uh, Victor's checking in from Humboldt County. Uh, that's one of B- Cody Bellinger's favorite counties. <laughs> Because hey. of all the reefer. Yeah, I think they got it. I don't think they need it. You know Ricky Bobby Trios from uh, up in Canada? Did not know that. Originally from Redlands. And he says boot? that's an upgrade, and I I would agree. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We got Brawley checking in. Sergio's here. We got Johnny in uh, La Mirada. We got Matthew's also checking in from Downey. A lot of locals here. Uh, Mr. and Mr. Local. <laughs> Mr. and Mr. Local. Yeah, we got a little bit of everything going on. We're either in the immediate vicinity or very far beyond. We're not really in the outskirts. You know. Oscar Prince uh, Bo- Bowden? 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 Oscar says, uh, you guys think the Dodger fans are going to take over the series in San Diego? I think we're going to see San- uh, uh, Dodger Stadium South. I think it's going to happen again. I've heard there's still very many tickets still for sale for tonight's game, which is... Uh, on a Monday? 
I mean, it's Monday, seven thirty, big series. I, I would feel like those tickets would sell. I don't know the Padres' attendance, but I would imagine it should be higher than it has been in the past, as of late. I don't know though. Angels have like a uh, generational, two generational talents on their uh, roster, and they uh, can't really sell tickets. So yeah, yeah, It'd rough it, on the weekend. They can't sell tickets. So. <clears throat> It'd be like that. Brian Hatfield's in the stream saying hi, gents. How you doing, Brian? Thanks for hanging out. As always, we got Bullard from Santa Cruz. We got it's. It's the Humper, or it's Thumper, saying hi, y'all. Thumper, thank you for buying all that all that swag we saw just before we hit the live button. Somebody was nice enough to go to GearUp.LA and buy a bunch of stuff using our uh, the Father's Day weekend promo codes we had that dropped. So there should be some new promo codes coming up. We're trying to get some things prettied up in the store, but anybody who buys anything, we'd appreciate you. I'm eventually going to drop a uh, Blue Heaven podcast shirt. And then I'll only wear that. For to the, bed for the rest in of the shower branding at work branding game strong working on my front yard carlos asked if we give you a michelada sausage will you behave brooke in public i i still have not received confirmation that it exists from directly from employees by the way somebody so. get that ryan kid who uh who runs the the wieners at dodger stadium we want to talk to him what's his name ryan evans runs the wieners <laughs> we runs levy but you know if you okay. say runs yeah, the yeah. wieners it's i don't more, think he runs the wieners it's more funnier yeah anyways yeah, yeah, yeah. well guys we got a lot of you in here uh you guys are going off on the chat we appreciate you as always let's go ahead and dive into the show we got a sweep in front of the home crowd at dodger stadium east dudes and gals showed out at chase field so kudos i think the i think the paint company had a a, a a hand, a hand in that, in that? Yeah. yeah they generally do i think the, the arizona uh, series the paint travel agency so so shout out to them uh it's always cool to see them doing what they do best which is set up trips and bring people there but it was i don't know man it was funny it was really funny to see uh walker f and bueller get a standing o yeah at, I, mean, I mean on the road and you didn't really even think about it no i mean it made sense you like look out into the stands and it's all blue and <laughs> blue and white and i i mean Let's be fair. There's not really a consistent Diamondbacks uniform that you think of when you think of a Diamondbacks uniform because they like to change them so damn much. Um, and all of them are ugly, every single one of them. They should yeah. just only go with those throwback ones, the Luis Gonzalez yeah, yeah. Diamondback. They should only wear the, those. The cut off sleeves. But uh, it was interesting to see that crap. I mean, Dodgers fans, we know that they travel uh, even without travel companies helping them. We know Dodgers fans travel. We know they're all over the country. We know they're going to be at every game in some way, shape, or form, but it is still a little bit of a surprise to see that far out and that many people in the stands. So that was pretty cool. I wanted to ask Pujols about that today during his press conference. I did not get a chance to, but I wanted to be like, were you a little bit surprised? Because Angels fans sure as hell don't travel. <laughs> they absolutely do not. He had to have been uh, at least a little shocked. He hadn't seen probably crowds like that he in, said, uh, fans. <laughs> in like 10 years or so because we know Cardinals fans travel. Angels Cardinals fans, fans do, yeah. The only time you see Angels fans is in like an OC backyard barbecue and they're, they have an Angels tattoo and they go to games because they like the parking lot or something stupid and they have a hat and it's backwards and it's probably a trucker hat and uh their they favorite have, players they have the a tattooed on their calf usually that's that's another yeah. one yeah yeah yeah, yeah it looks like real real um real close to skin cancer type of person yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. just plays, very beat red yeah. play <laughs> plays a lot of uh a lot of uh what do they call that horse horse hockey horseshoes horseshoes yeah. goes down to like parker arizona every summer <laughs> hits on 20 year old girls we are assholes and i'm proud of us i think i mean sure the dodgers sweeped that was great. That's what you want. I I really feel um, like it's not too much of a stretch for me to say. I, I'm pretty sure my favorite part of the entire series was Josh Reddick getting booed at Chase Field. That was rough, man. That was uh, beautiful. I mean, if, if you're him, you got to really – you know what else is funny? I mean, he had like three of the runs driven in that game or whatever. They weren't good hits. Like they're all kind of bloopers or whatever. But a hit's a hit in the book. Uh, and to get just absolutely booed. I'm pretty sure Diamondbacks fans were also booing him. He's not a likable person. I don't understand, like, I don't understand how anybody can like him, honestly. If you can find me one fan of Josh Reddick, I would be very shocked. And I'm sure that the only person that is a fan of him is somebody who's like, I had a really good encounter with him one-on-one -on -one, uh, that one time I ran into him at a, an HEB in Houston or whatever, uh -huh. and that's it. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. I think even Astros fans are at the point where, like, we don't really want to associate with him anymore. No. The same way the Dodgers fans, as soon as he left, were like, we don't want to associate with him anymore. Then he became a dick, uh, as, you know, dicks do. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved it. I'm really, really happy that everyone hates him. I really Josh. enjoyed that. I feel like I was a little early on the Josh Reddick hate. You are. You're a trendsetter. I digress. I'm I'm happy for us. Do uh, do you want do you want like a plaque? I can find you can get it up on the wall. Yeah, the first Josh Reddick hater. <laughs> Josh Reddick uh, haters uh, haters club right here. You have him on your catch hands list about five times. So we're proud of you for being a trendsetter. But the important thing, the thing that really does matter, is going into Arizona and beating a really really shitty team, and that's what the Dodgers did. You almost they're so bad you really almost kind of feel bad for them and they were talking about that I was listening to the radio broadcast uh, <laughs> at one point during uh, I think it was during you know the time of the no hitter that was still intact for Mr. Walker Bueller <laughs> uh, Charlie was like like this is embarrassing I feel I feel <laughs> terrible for him like when do you feel sorry for him and and Rick being smart being a ball player Rick Monday is like you know you 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 feel bad for them after you leave town. Yeah, after yeah, you yeah. win, you win some games, out. get the yeah. hell out of there, and then look back and be like, "That poor franchise." I think, uh, I think it was Pollock after yesterday's game. It was either after yesterday's or after Saturday's, where they're yeah. like, "Hey, man, like you know, you played here, you have friends here still. This, you know, this is an organization you came up with. What do you feel for them? You know, do you feel a little bit bad?" And, he, and you can tell he was just like, "Yeah, I mean." They're going through it, man. They're grinding. And that's when you say you're grinding, that means I'm, I'm trying really hard, but mm -hmm. it's not working. That's usually what it means. In big league terms, you really got to feel for that team. Just nothing. Yeah. Nothing particularly went their way yeah. in general. But, uh, again, Dodgers go there. They sweep the practice girl. That's what you want to do. You have your way with uh, a bad team like the Diamondbacks. And they can put on as many different shirts as they want. You're still going to get beat. Uh, maybe at some point they'll match with the pants. Uh, it was another good opportunity, too, to be able to see, uh, you know, kind of learn about some, I would say, some areas that we've had some concerns over that we haven't talked about too much. I mean, last week we, in our inaugural version of uh, Let Them Play or DFA, apparently Oof. we we killed Nate Jones. That's on us, guys. So, <laughs> I, so I apologize. Um, Sometimes yeah. I forget the power that we have over <laughs> things happening in life, and I don't take them too seriously, but uh, I think we single-handedly killed him. <clears throat> so... You did. You killed I, him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was right. You were the right. numbers said as much, and clearly I am Andrew Friedman. I was Andrew Friedman all along. That other guy is is a hoax. Hmm. He's a nice boy. Built him that, that statue already. But uh, there are still very weak spots in the pitching staff. And, you know, we look at the numbers. You know, as we're going to get into the Padres series a little bit later, we look at the numbers and one thing where the Padres are excelling is the spot where they put all their money in is in the bullpen, or not in the bullpen, in the pitching staff, because yep. you're able to have a better bullpen if you don't have guys you know, in the rotation that maybe shouldn't be there, whatever it may be. So we learned that uh, Mitch White isn't quite ready. Uh, oh, sorry, we, we solidified that Mitch White isn't quite ready for prime time. Uh, same with Edwin, who said that. Or mop-up duty. Or mop-up duty in any way. They're not ready for that. Um, yeah, I, I would – I don't know. I guess that's kind of my thing to you here. Like, Are you concerned about the, the lack of a mop-up dude? Yeah, I mean – Everybody they've tried has failed. One way or the other. I mean, in a blowout, either way, if you're losing by a lot, if you're winning by a lot, you, you need that guy who's just going to eat up some innings for you, who's going to you know get you through to the end, make sure that you don't blow a – freaking 10 run lead whatever it is at mm -hmm. the time we didn't have that yesterday obviously it almost went very bad for us they came oh, within yeah. a run they honestly came pretty close to tying it up or taking the lead <clears throat> in years past i mean who's been that guy pedro Baez has been that guy for us in years past not necessarily in terms of eating up innings eating up an inning and a half maybe uh ross tripling's been that guy brock mm -hmm. stewart has been that guy we've, we've had those dudes and they've been able to do that job very well in the sense of like hey i'm not going to give up seven runs i'm going to give up one maybe two which is kind of yeah. expected in a, in a situation like that but now you got guys like edwin who i mean just did not look good just did not look good at all both and with both of them the problem is nibbling not trusting their stuff they're they're trying to pepper the outside of the zone yeah they're trying to do too much they're trying to impress yeah. they're trying to Solidify a spot in the which I get the bullpen. I exactly, hundred percent. You want to you want to be up with the team. You don't want to keep traveling back and forth. Who wants to go to Oklahoma City? What is there? Nothing's there. There's nothing in Oklahoma City except the OKC Dodgers, and that's it. Confirmed. 
um, you want to be there. Yeah. So we, it, it's just understanding the situation, though. It's understanding, hey, just go right at these hitters, throw as many strikes as you can, get these guys to put the ball in play, let's get the hell out of here, it's getaway day, we got a game in San Diego tomorrow, <laughs> we got to go. Instead, it was nibble at the corners, issue some walks, nibble mm-hmm. at the corner, issue some walks, come back in the zone, give up some big hits, and yeah. it's bad. And, and uh, you know, we're in there on the, uh, the, the post-game media calls and all of that, and uh, you know – some heads are rolling when it's a win and Dave Roberts comes in just pissed. He was he wanted no part of it. He was real short. He had a little tinge of salty Dave. And uh yeah, the next day who's gone Edwin Usetta. <laughs> Yeah, I think he went straight to his locker and packed his shit for him, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that's what took Dave so long. He's packing up his bag. He's just cussing at him <laughs> as he's doing it. And it's like, Dave, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's a tough situation because Edwin's got really good stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, somebody like Mitch White was a, a, a heralded top prospect at one point. Probably needs another pitch, but he also just needs to attack the zone, trust the stuff. These are big league players who can get you outs as long as the – the ball is you know staying in the field or you're not walking dudes you can't get an out on a walk so it sucks but it's also a problem right now you can kind of get away with it uh you know you still got a lot of baseball left but at some point you know if you if you don't end up with a couple of those insurance runs all of a sudden those games get out of hand and and or whatever it was like i i saw some i got some a little bit of crap on the internet about uh going back to the walker bueller you know, when he was taken out and, and wanted to bring in a shutdown reliever there. There's a lot of different reasons why I went that way with it. One, it 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 killed a scoreless inning streak for him, which had been going. Yeah, no. Giving up two runs, uh, or sorry, two earned runs coming in under his ledger uh, affect his already tight chances at a Cy Young, potential Cy Young, and right. if he gets innings and he does all that. So I'm looking at it from, uh, I would say... It's it's not the the team first way. No, no, but it's even definitely not. that game wasn't about team first anymore. You know, Dave was talking about how much he wanted that no hitter. They all wanted that no hitter for Walker, and it went away. It was one hit. You opted for the wrong guy. Now two runs are all added to Walker's ledger, and all of a sudden it went from probably one of his top career regular season outings, if not one of the better outings of his career. By I would imagine by game score, and look at the game score too. Now it's like you're going to look at that and. On, on his baseball card or on baseball reference, and it's just it's not going to look like a great game. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. He went seven and a third. I definitely understood both sides of it. I mean, obviously, teams come first, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. But also, the funny thing is, like, Dave's been in that situation before where he's been like, I'm going to choose the player in this situation because he's earned it. I mean, yeah. he gave us – he shoved for seven straight innings. We tried to get him out there for another eighth to get the no-hitter done. He didn't get it done. Maybe I didn't pull him fast enough after that. Put him in a situation where now the runs are on base. I want to do something to get him out of this. Walk away with a clean slate, seven shutout innings. He's been that guy. He's done that before. But mm-hmm. he went, you know, he went the wrong direction. I feel like there were, I mean, what kind of use did Trinan get this weekend? Yeah. I mean, there's there's guys, high leverage guys that you could have used in that situation <laughs> just for an inning or even, you know, just for that particular out. Yeah, even. there was a few. My my thing was uh, I went my in my head. My guy was Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly hadn't thrown in four days at that point. You you get him a little bit of work. You get him ready for a series, um, as important or not important. You pick how you know the level of importance this Padre series is, of which all series are important because all wins are made the same. I guess maybe a little less so when it's a uh, somebody that you know chasing you or whatever for uh, a spot in the postseason, but. Yeah, there was just a lot I didn't like about it on a personal level for Walker Bueller. I get it. At the end of the day, it's probably the right call on the team aspect of it, but still, that if it's this is your guy, this is your horse, this is kind of his coming out year, um, that's where I lose it. That's where, where Dave loses me, and it's just another in a long line of questionable Dave moves, which probably makes it uh, more worser for me, as the kids say. Dave moves. We should have an entire <laughs> series. I mean, every time we create a series, we have to cancel it because something bad happens. But mm-hmm. Got a few of the comments here. Nomo FOMO saying, I was so mad when White gave up the runs. Also said he should have brought in Clevenger first. I wouldn't have mind, minded seeing uh, Clev come in there. Also, it's a little tough because he was just coming off the injured list, but I get it. Um, 
anybody but Mitch White particularly. Maybe in that situation, maybe bring in Mitch for the next inning. Yeah, someone brought up Phil Bickford as well. I mean, that's a guy that could potentially be a legend? mop-up guy. The legend? <laughs> I don't think he's going to be quite as high leverage as you think he's going to be. Uh, but, I mean, he's another guy. He can fill in that spot. He can get the job done. He mm-hmm. can get a few outs for you. I don't know about length on Phil Bickford. Yeah. Tall boy, I guess. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it's about that, that long. Yeah, pretty yeah. long. Uh-huh. The uh, Sunday game, we learned <laughs> that Tony Gonsolin, our boy Tony Smokes, the cat man, is not quite right. He's got some shoulder uh, issues still lingering. Yep. And that's our number five guy. That's a problem because you can't go trying to get David Price built up now. He's already lost any buildup that he had. Jimmy Nelson, as we've said time and time again here, is is proving to be too important in the bullpen right now. So you got to make a move potentially, but first thoughts on on the shoulder. What do you think? Because Tony afterwards, it seemed like Dave made it a little bit worse than it was, and it seemed worse because of angry slash salty Dave happening. Yeah, I'm not sure. He didn't want to talk about it. Uh, Dave didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. I think more than anything, he's like, yeah, it's pro- it's a shoulder. I don't know what to tell you. It's a shoulder. Like he was one step away from being that guy. Yeah. Um, don't love it. <laughs> don't love that he goes from you know 85 plus pitches the outing before to 46 pitches. That's a pretty significant step back. But at the same time, when you look at it, you're also like, okay, but they did start him still. So it's yeah. obviously not to the point where they were like, we are concerned about this. We're going to scratch him from the start. We're going to go bullpen game, which is something they absolutely could have done. They have the wherewithal to do that. They have the arms to do that if they need to. Um, so that kind of instilled a little bit more confidence than me, I guess. But also, you know, that shoulder shut him down from – the end of spring training all the way through this month. So if if that is an issue, I mean, is that something that we need to watch out for the whole year? Yes. Now? Because the Dodgers have all their eggs in one Tony Gonsolin basket right now. This is the first time the Dodgers have been this thin on starting depth in as long as I can remember, man. Because usually we've always had a Ross that we can just plug in there and he'll ho-hum go, you know, pitch his way to an all-star berth or whatever the hell it may be. But – now you're coming off a 60 game season. You got a, a full 162 game season. You already lost your number five starter to the, uh, for the year to Tommy John. You have dudes who haven't thrown all that many uh, innings in a year over their career. You got Julio, who's coming up. What he's he's at 84 pitches, uh, 80 84 innings this year so far. His career high from majors to minors was 124, 122. And he did that, what, five years ago before major before shoulder yep. surgery. Uh, you, you can't really expect him to go 200 innings. They said before the season you can't expect him to go more than two or, or to go 200 innings. Same with Walker Bueller. Uh, I think Mark Pryor before the season said he's probably not going to pitch uh, more than or, or he's not going to approach gonna that 200, 200. Yeah. at least in the regular <laughs> season. You would imagine – at some point in the re- in the postseason, they're going to get that way. They just cut them loose. <laughs> uh, I think they t- they all take care of uh, each other. They all, I should say they take care of themselves and each other uh, enough to surpass that into the postseason. But at the same time, you can't go having these dudes, uh, you know, five starters and that's it. Or four starters. This isn't uh, the swinging 60s or 70s or whatever the hell it is where dudes made 40 starts. So I know you had the question. When, which is like, when does Julio go to the bullpen? Yeah, I think uh, last week when Dave was asked about it, it was the first time I was really like, oh, he's going back to the bullpen. Mm-hmm. Like, he's he's not going to be in the rotation the entire year. Because when I asked Dave about it, he was like, yeah, you know, that's something we'll manage. That's something we'll keep an eye on throughout the course of the season. And I was like, okay, very vague answer. I don't know what else I expected. Then the next week, it's like, a, yeah, you know, his workload's getting way up there. Uh, you know, eventually <laughs> you you put know, it in his head. he that's can why. go back to the bullpen. He can be that guy. He's proven he can be a bullpen guy, especially in postseason time. And I was like, oh, this is like, this is a plan now. Like, this is all coming together. He is going back to the bullpen. It's just a matter of when at this point. I don't know. That's going to suck. The biggest thing for me is I don't know if they're going to ride him out as a starter and then move him to the bullpen or if they're going to try to save him, move him to the bullpen, and then try to ride him out as a starter through the playoffs. I, I can't figure out what their plan is for this because they, when you're looking at a playoff rotation, you know your big three. You know you know who's coming in the first three games for sure. I don't know what the plan is for the four starter. You don't you, you don't have five starters in a playoff series almost ever, uh, yeah. maybe on rare occasion, but almost never. So when you're thinking about it from that standpoint, it's like, yeah, he would be a really good fourth starter, but also he has been a very good postseason reliever. He would be a waste of a starter uh, to be that fourth guy. 
Uh, I think so. Because it would be an it, absolute waste. Espe and especially if you're going to have, let's say Tony Gonsolin is your fourth starter, you can piggyback Julio with him. You can't yes. have him go three innings after Tony does, and He's, that is just Julio as effective. Julio is such a dynamic arm. And I know we're going to get crap with about this. We're not, we're not advocating for it. We don't want him in the bullpen. It's it's happening. It just though. makes the most sense. Again, if he's not in the bullpen in 2020, the Dodgers do not win a World Series. That's that's uh, blatantly obvious in my mind. Does he deserve to be in the bullpen? No. But at some point, you know, <laughs> like you guys want to win. Well, this is uh, this is what happens. You go to the bullpen and you make us better, and you know maybe we'll get you a start, Antony. It, depending on how long the series goes, and that won't even happen until the championship series because the, you know the uh, division series are usually short series. So Tony might not even pitch; he might be a bullpen guy in that one. If knock on table, Tony's healthy enough. So it's hit a point now. The second question: Do the Dodgers go out and get a starter? Because I asked Dave uh, a couple days ago, like, what's what's the latest on on JoJo Gray, friend of the show? He's barely even like tossing right now. He's maybe a later in the season guy. He's made one start so far this year. It does. It, it, his the plan was for him to be a later in the season innings eater, kind of get some get his big league feet wet and hopefully pick up some meaningful innings away from Julio, away from Walker. Get their innings pitched um, a little bit, you know, more reasonable, more in line. I, I mean, hell, we're talking about these guys. Same with Kirsch. Kirsch is, is coming off a short season as well. And a bad back guy. And a bad I mean, back. A bad, bad backs parts. usually flare up. Anybody who's had a bad back in their life knows that once you have a bad back, it's a bad back. It's I, never going to get better. I think you're doing uh, yourself, you're doing your team, you're doing your fan base a major disservice, major disservice, if you're banking on 33 starts out of a 33-year-old Clayton Kirsch. I think you're doing yourself a major disservice to bet on 33 starts from anybody except for Trevor Bauer, mm -hmm. honestly. He's the only guy at this point where I'm like, yeah, go ahead, do 30. Yeah. I don't care. You want to pitch 40 i don't care whatever you want to do you do it um i'm not worried about you but there are a number of arms that are yeah. available out there um none of them are particularly good by the way none of these guys are they're not going to be playoff starters they're not going to be guys that get you through a season they're not going to be a guys that win you mm -hmm. a title none, nothing like that they're going to be guys who win you a title by saving your best arms and yeah. that's their purpose that's the, that is their lot in life and i think that we need somebody like that because yeah. Yeah. you look at the minor league depth we don't have that. No, you, Who is, who's there? You don't need a dude that's going to start in the first three games of a postseason uh, of a postseason series or whatever, he, or, or whatever the hell it is. He's not going to start in a uh, postseason series. You don't need that guy. You need an innings eater. They're going to get a that's guy if, if just they were for the to, regular season. If they were to go out and get a guy, he is a guy that is not part of the playoff roster. That is my opinion on that. I don't know how accurate it might end up being. Who knows at this point? I saw a question in here from somebody. I have kind of lost it, but somebody, oh, uh, I can't say that. It's on YouTube. <laughs> Said, uh, what about David Price? He can always be a starter, and that's a question that we've been asking all year long. It mm -hmm. seems like at this point that there's just inexplicably, I don't know if there's something else going on with DP. I don't know if they're worried about stretching him out after sitting out an entire year. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what the case is. It seems like they are entirely staying away from that plan. But he has thrown 50 pitches in an outing. That was a bad outing. It was kind of just the yeah. way it played out. He had to throw 50 pitches. But, I mean, you got to imagine at some point they at least start you entertaining that no idea. You have no choice. Unless you're How going you out and getting getting somebody that's um, – you're not gonna, the Dodgers aren't going to go out and get Max Scherzer. I see some of the comments. I get it. That would be that would be wonderful. Be awesome. That would be delicious. You know, it's all be good if I made way. a million dollars a second not doing anything. How much did you make right Five there? <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. You gotta you gotta tone back. You gotta get a little more realistic. Same, I would say here to our friend Roach, who says Crip, Chris Capuano season no. Let's uh let's go ahead and Chris just, uh, Wano. Let's yeah. go ahead and DFA that guy right well, there. You pull Brandon McCarthy out of retirement. He's still yippy. Yes. Mm. He's got he's got bum parts. Jason Schmidt, what's he doing? <laughs> so I think he's probably still getting paid by uh Ned Coletti. By Ned Coletti directly. <laughs> our our boy uh our boy Erod City at City of Chips or City of Champs on the uh on the tweeter says gotta get a starter. Plenty of veteran arms out there the Dodgers can get for cheap. There are some options, some fillers. Even if you go like the I mean, shit, we're still paying for him, they, and the Giants released him. Let's go get Scott Kazmir, give him two or three starts just to bridge that gap. They already bridged a month with bullpen games. and I'm about it. 
Maybe if if they start, you know, some of the relievers, or they find a reliever, they go that route, and you you plug, you know, price in, and maybe that was always the plan. Maybe the plan is to give DP uh, to throw them into the rotation later in the season, ramp them up, yeah, give them time. I mean, if that's the plan, it's working out that way. It's certainly lining up that way. I don't know when that ramp up officially starts because you're not getting four innings out of them right now. I'll tell you that. Maybe we need a, you know, Ted Lilly's probably not busy these days. I don't know what he's doing, but he could probably still throw sixty-three. Anybody got Darren Dryford's number? Jamie Moyer. I don't know. He's, he'd still be down. Uh, Chad Billingsley, he's only like 36, 37. Hell, Chad Billingsley's only 36. Yes, yeah, wild. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. That, that, if that doesn't make you feel young or old, that's... Um, Tim Wakefield still throws the exact same speed. Not one mile an hour difference. Not one. We need a knuckleballer. <laughs> I, think a, I think there was a big article about that where it was like, why baseball needs a knuckleballer right now. Well, I don't think I, it's accurate. <laughs> I, I understand when you just you need a headline. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Really. Yeah. Look, there's nothing to write about. Sticky so. situation. Get the knuckleball. <laughs> it's all about the sticky. More sticky situation coming later. We're going to have uh, first time guest Rich Eisen on. <laughs> he doesn't know it, though. <laughs> well, we're calling him. <laughs> Scott. Scott Novak says Ryan Pepio. Um, he's not on the 40 man. It would be tough to see that happen. But uh, again, they got to find somebody. We'll start investigating this a little bit more. Look at some options. I mean, we're we're coming up on trade deadline season pretty quick, and things have been really quiet. Or I just haven't been looking at MLB trade rumors. I don't know, but things it's really been seem quiet. quiet. It's been pretty quiet. The the sticky stuff has all the headlines right now, so that's where uh, that's where Passon and Rosenthal's heads are. So once they start going, then officially trade deadline season starts. But I know our uh, our boy Doug McCain is going to be looking at some uh, trade options, trade ideas uh, in the probably in the next week or so. So make sure you subscribe onto our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Dodgers Nation TV, and keep an eye out for Dodgers Dugout, D-O-U-G. Out. You, know, uh, you know Andy Freeman's working on something. Oh, yeah. He's always working. Let's call him real quick. Real G's moving silence like lasagna. You know what I mean? Do whatever's next. He's probably at Target. Just do whatever. Target a lot. You do right. Best well, friend. from that, I mean, it's hard to move past trade talk. Everybody wants to talk about trades and dreaming of the future and everything that could be. And uh, I'm not much of a dreamer, but uh, I, yeah, as you can tell, I, I just want an arm that we're going to drop by the playoffs. Not yeah. much of a dreamer, am I? Yeah. We're going to talk All Star Game voting updates <laughs> because that is the next thing in line. It just makes the most sense. That's the. I mean, that's what happened today. There was an All Star Game voting update. Happens every Monday. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you got a chance to look at those numbers no. and the movement on them. Maybe not. I'm not even uh, here. The most important thing, Chris Taylor climbed up from number six in outfield voting to number five in outfield voting. Hashtag vote ZT3. Which is amazing because he also passed Juan Soto on that list, which is... Is he still in the league? Yeah. Well, it's a pretty big jump to jump over a, you know, a young face of the French or face of baseball like uh-huh. Juan Soto. That's pretty cool. You remember, um, you remember when Juan Soto was face baseball and then Tatis, and then Tatis was healthy over, and then yeah. MLB is just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Insert the, hand gesture here. And the MLB Instagram account, I think, is kind of trolling baseball oh, fans yeah. right now oh, because yeah. they posted a clip where Hosmer just like reached over the wall to catch and they were like, Hos! And everybody was like, why did you post this? Like, this is a, any first baseman makes this play uh-huh. in any league. I think they're doing it on purpose now at this point. But JT, well behind Chris Bryant at third base. Uh, don't think he's going to be a top vote getter over there. And that's okay. Gavin Lux, surprisingly, third place at second base. I mean, there's not a lot of good second basemen in, in the National League. Where have all the second basemen gone? Exactly. Max Muncy on the IL, still in first place in, at first base. I, I don't think there's any way at this point he doesn't start first base. I no. don't think. Plus, when it, we know when it comes to the All Star Game, uh, Dave, even though he doesn't have this kind of power, Dave is a homer, thousand percent a homer, big time homer. Yeah, he yeah. will find a way. He does seem, to be fair, he does seem more dead set on on Chris Taylor making the All Star team than anybody else. He had a long conversation about it today at his press conference about how there needs to be a utility man position on the All Star Game roster. There also needs to be a utility man, Gold Glove and Silver Slugger and things like that, which was. Kind of cool. Pretty good idea. He also said Major League Baseball is always behind on everything, and that was one thing that he pointed to. Yeah. No. You don't often hear Dave criticizing the league or baseball itself, but uh, when he does, you can bet it's noteworthy. So, money on give the us, table. Give us salty, Dave. Uh-huh. It's Chris Taylor making the All-Star team. Yes. Dave will find his way. Baseball will find a way. Love finds a way. And I love CT3. Uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's All good. Circle. Circular. <sighs> How many how many Dodgers uh, make that All Star team in your opinion? I don't know because pitching is weird. Um, pitching voting is is interesting because Bueller. 
Bueller definitely makes it. I, I'm assuming Bauer probably makes it. Kenley. Kenley. Oh, man. Kenley has to make it at this point. Because when it gets to relievers, it gets kind of muddled because people are like, there needs to be different, different relievers. And I'm like, no, nah, it's usually just closers mm-hmm. that usually make it. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from that, I don't think I don't think anybody else sneaks in. Julio at one point probably could have, but I think he's kind of hit a little bit of a I mean, averageness. He's, he's They're still really far behind, and he's, what, tied or in the lead for, for wins in the league? So Wins. Yeah. Yeah. They love that. The old MLB folks, they love that. Wins. That's the old That's guys. Right. The We're old built writers. on wins and ERAs and stolen bases. <laughs> and small ball. Oorah. So make sure you guys go out and rock the vote, as they say. I think Kanye used to say that. Um, he was he was paid to do it. We're not. We just really like our uh, the deserving Dodgers to get uh, get on the All Star team. And absolutely, a thousand million percent, Chris Taylor needs to be an All Star because that dude. Even he's he's in a little bit of a slump, but just a difference maker. Absolute difference he just maker. Hit like a mild dong. <laughs> Chase he does. That was a very uh, <laughs> that was a very girthy dong that he hit, where he hit his first dong as a Dodger just about five years ago uh, to the day. Max Muncy also will be there. And uh, another guy, very deserving. Dude's leading the league still in walks, I think, and he hasn't played in like a week. Love that man. Corey Seager's third in shortstop voting. I don't know how you feel about that, per- but personally I don't I don't love that because he shouldn't be third. He should be lower <laughs> than third. I mean, it doesn't matter. Tatis is going to get it. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's he, I mean, he's absolutely blowing everybody else away at the position. But it is just odd to me. It's like he's been out for a while, guys. I don't know if we can just throw him in the All Star game. It, that's why I don't like fan voting too much. I think mm-hmm. there should be a different method to it, personally. But mm-hmm. you know, fans like to feel included. You like yeah. to feel like your vote matters. Mm-hmm. So you you want uh, you want like an MLB electoral college uh, yeah. where undeserving people just Kansas pick City whatever votes they want. Count less. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if you live in the middle of the country and your team's bad, yeah, your votes count for less. I don't know. Where you could just go and like make two states so you can get more votes. Yeah, just yeah. the Royals. They just gotta count for less. <laughs> they just gotta count for less. I'm not doing that BS 2015 All Star Game or whatever it was when we had like six Royal starters for no reason. <laughs> Get into the comments a little bit here on this one. City of Champions says Bueller, Bauer, Kenley, Taylor, Smith should be all stars. We didn't mention Will Smith. The dude is being real sneaky good, real sneaky good. Dude, he's hitting over three hundred against right-handed pitching, which is it's funny. His uh, his reverse splits. He's better than JT Real Muto. I don't know that name. Remember, remember that was the only guy like we ever we have anybody have ever wanted. We need him. We didn't have a catcher for a while. That's <laughs> this why is, this is we we have had too many years of AJ Ellis. We need somebody and Chooch. We. <laughs> Wait, tell me, we had we had us uh, um, yes, many pass balls at that point. Oh man, oh, you remember that, that was era? such a fun time to be a Dodger fan. Yeah, I have never ever had somebody hate their own player before more than people hated Yasmani. No wonder why that dude took off when free agency. No, he's not that great at Daniel the, catching the, the ball. The second that season ended, he packed his shit up and booked it out of Dodger Stadium, and it was oh, like, yeah. I will never see you again. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Yes, money. Roach says, let's make the All-Star game more fun. Pitchers use sticky stuff and batters use aluminum bats and steroids. I'm in. Can we do that with uh, with like a, a Blitzball League? I told him I would I would be way more. Are you into the Home Run Derby, by the way? I'm, I'm, I can't get in on it. I just can't really get excited. I would be way more in on it if they used the juice balls yes. and those orange stealth bats from when we were younger. <laughs> Remember those? Those things, that, I mean, you could be like a, a, a 13-year-old third <laughs> yeah, baseman yeah. and just get absolutely wrecked by like a 16-year-old. Just like 600 feet tanks. Oh, yeah, just through your chest, like a hole straight we, through you. We've seen in in the last, what, 20 years-ish, we've seen two good uh, home run derbies. We saw Jock against Vlad Jr. in 2019. And we saw he stopped Choi hit five home runs, I think it was, yeah, hell in yeah. the 05 All-Star game. Worth it. Worth every penny. Only there because he was Korean and then baseball decided they were going to do a weird, like, like uh, I don't know, around the world theme to the All-Star or to the home run derby. They were like, he stopped Choi is really fun to say. We should take him to the home run derby. That's sure. all it was. By the way, I haven't given much thought to this, but it just occurred to me that uh, Dave Roberts is going to have a uh, ceremonial manager have you have you given any thought to who that might be man what what if it's Tio albert <laughs> the finding his way to get him into his final all a final all-star game because his wife said he isn't playing anymore 
Be real. I, I mean, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? I don't know who else it would be. Oh, man. Who could it be? It's probably somebody we don't even know. I hope know. Andy it's Green. Like just his Let it be or, Andy Green. Andy Green. <laughs> it's probably like just his friend or something that I we don't, don't know. know. It's going to be Cole Roberts. Oh. <laughs> um, I saw one, uh, Jay Garrison, asking, where in the world is Paco Rodriguez? He is on Atlanta. And, He's in Atlanta? And he threw like 60 pitches in relief against us in the postseason last year. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's just effed up. He died for them. Yeah, he laid out and just took a bullet for the entire city of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> King Yellowman adds, uh, will Dave add Pujols to the All-Star game? That's how we're going to do it. That's what we're going to do. He's going to be Ceremony an honorary manager. coach, because why not? I, too, am going to be an honorary coach. I'm going to be on John Boy's team for that weird, like, blitzball oh, thing they're the setting up. Thingy, yeah. I really hope Chris Rose plays, because Rosie, I love Rosie, but he's, like, one of the most unathletic athletic dudes, athletic-looking-ish yeah, yeah, yeah. dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll be excited for that one. <laughs> let it happen. Let him let him do it. And then, uh, you know, Jake just being weird. Weird Jake dude. I like that guy also. Uh, Swag Daddy McGee's in the stream. Says, what up? Real Brooke and Clint Me 3. How are we oh, feeling tonight? That's a first. Clint Me 3. How are you feeling tonight? I feel better. Well, I feel yeah. right. Yeah, I feel right, Brian. I feel right. I feel good now. The rest of this week is in a suka load of tunas. Oh, yeah. Don't talk to us this week. Yeah, we're going to be busy. If, yeah. if Thursday happens, it, it would have been a stretch, but it might happen. We haven't had real jobs in a long time, so... We're not used to working every day. Even even doing that isn't a, so much of a real job. We have to go yeah. places. We have to go test hot dogs. <laughs> That's Golden. not a euphemism. <laughs> we're, we're testing hot dogs. At Golden Road. Keep an eye out on our social media on Wednesday. We'll all be at a place that we can't tell you about, I think. Because... Dipping hot dogs in beer. Is that is that a thing? I don't know. Is that was that what a Mitchell that was the, wasn't that in the email? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but it'll be me, the this guy. It'll be Doug, Doug, Doug me three, me three <laughs> and uh, new Doug, Mister Gary. We're all gonna be there. I'm gonna be very afraid, very afraid with Gary uh, on location again. Ari Swerdlow says Clinton Brook are the best. We're making a lot of Story real, checkouts. real, uh, real. Uh, what's that called? Not consistent, committed fans lately, and I really appreciate that from you we guys. We do appreciate you guys. I see a lot of the same names in the chat every single day, and I uh, really, really, really like that because, <laughs> you know, I don't have any friends in real life. This is true. So. You got Max, my dog. Yeah, he's yeah. a good boy. He kind of hates me, but uh, I mean, don't we all a little bit? Yeah. Duncan Duncan John says, uh, "Wieners at Golden Road." Yes, you heard that right. Moving on. I also want to remind you guys, um, we have like our friends over at Vintage Brand, and if you like cool vintage stuff like we have, like this uh, koozie, or sorry, this is a can insulator. We got this koozie. I should have turned on the little camera. We got the 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 canvas you guys have seen. There's a lot of really really cool stuff they have over at Vintage Brand, and they always always have a forty percent sale. For new customers. So check it out over at vintagebrand.com slash site slash subscribe. Sign up for their uh, their email and you can get 40% off. You can get some cool stuff. The, the sweaters are actually really cool too. Well, I mean, I guess they're warm. But anyways. Cool. <sighs> Just wanted to give a little plug to our friends over at Vintage Brand. Moving on. Somebody I don't want to plug and people we generally don't uh -huh. like. It's the Padres. Chinga to Padres. Yeah, this is usually the point where we start mentioning the Padres, and then a bunch of Padres fans my, jump in, and they're kiddos. like, beat LA, you guys suck, Mickey Mouse ring, win a real championship, which is an odd thing to say for a team that's never won a title, but I, I'm not going to question how you shit talk. And celebrated a playoff berth. You do you. We would have won if our starters were healthy, things like that. You know, it is what it is. Mike Clevenger's not that good, by the way. Um, Mike Clevenger, Garrett Clevenger. About the same pitcher, honestly. About the same. There's very little difference between the two. I, I mean, prove me otherwise. Hold on. That's going to get pulled. I got to get a little prettied up for uh, when this ends up on Reddit and they, yeah, the, yeah, the kids yeah. are talking shit. Just so you know, it's good to see you guys again, Padres. I missed you. Yeah. We love you because you guys are so easy. You're so simple to rile up. And you give us a ton of views. A ton. We're here for the clicks. Oh, my God. But we got an NOS showdown with the third place show pods, Dodgers. We're in second place. They're about, what, three and a half games ahead of the show pods, as we're going to call them. That's an honor of Jerry Harrison Jr. He's a big-time show pods guy, and we know Jay Hare comes up with the best nicknames. Everybody loves him. You know what CT3's nickname is? Christopher. 
You can't you can't make these nicknames up, I tell you, boys and they girls. They call him the real A B. <laughs> no, they don't. No one has ever called him that. <laughs> but uh still through it all, I mean, they've they've matched up twice so far this season. Dodgers have lost four of the seven matchups. Of course, the last time these two matched up, the Dodgers were in, they were mired, or they were just at the start of, like... That's what kicked it off. <laughs> a really, really, really god-awful streak. So, it was, it was, uh, it just happens. That's part of baseball. That's why you don't worry about these early series. I mean, we'll talk a little bit uh, if we're even worried about, or if we, how much, like, credit we give to this series in June, if there's anything more to it being, than it just being a, a series in June, which it is, but... Um, you know, they're, uh, both clubs are, are coming in off sweeps. The Padres swept the lowly Reds for four games. That's But that's coming off the back of getting swept by the Rockies. So I don't know how oh. good you could feel. Yeah, it's really hard to read that team right now. <laughs> Dodgers, of course, just swept the D-Bags. And are, uh, their Dodgers are 12-5 and five in June as of time we're recording, which is before Monday's game. Padres 8-11 and 11, if I did the math right of which i'm bad at math so we're on a different swing this might be their down series uh like we had the last time the dodgers had the last time these two met, uh, met up matched up but um it's really just a, a tale of two teams kind of struggling with injuries and that that's generally what uh what the narrative has been for both teams throughout the season uh, of course fernando tatis nando mlb savior um hurt his shoulder again by playing the game the way he does which is hard which is the right way but also he's probably a little bit uh, inconsiderate to his body he's also only 22 so you know good bounce back time eat your wheaties kids yeah um he's and he's gonna keep running into that that issue you know it was a, it was a weird slide i don't know if anybody saw it but he slid and he uh kind of rolled over his shoulder a little funky like and it's the bad shoulder so you probably don't want to do that but that's there, uh, I don't know. I didn't look up all the the injuries because the Padres and I don't really care. But of course, the Dodgers are without Seager, without Bellinger, without Muncie. Two of those guys will be coming back. <sighs> the offense is about what you'd expect out of San Diego. They're middling. They're I got a, a. I think they're 14th in the league in offense, best pitching staff in baseball, which is where they invested their money and, and time in the off season. So it makes sense. Um, what are your thoughts on the, on all that? Go ahead, real quick. I mean, the majority of their offense over the past month has been Tatis, so yeah. him not being in the lineup is going to hurt them. And I understand why they're maybe pushing it. I don't know, don't know all the de details of it. I do know that since he did just get hurt and then had to come out of the game and then didn't play Sunday and now is playing tonight, I can guarantee you that he is going deep tonight, essentially, because that's just what he does against the Dodgers. Um, it sucks. I don't know in terms of like value, like. I've seen it a lot where people are like, this is a, the biggest series of the year somehow. I don't know how you can declare that in June with a third place team playing a second place team, particularly. Don't quite understand that. If you do subscribe to that, drop it in the comments. Tell me why, because I don't get it personally. I think the Giants series coming up after the Cup series, way more important. Miles more important, but you know, you do you. I'm not going to tell you how to fan you, weirdo. <laughs> yeah. I uh, put as much value on it as you want. Yeah. I will say it does take just a ton of energy out of me to play the Padres regardless. It, it, it's, it's you know, there's so many ebbs and flows of a game. There's so much emotion that goes into it. There's so much shit talking from Padres fans all the time. So much happening like 24-7 on the internet when the Padres and Dodgers are playing. So I know that by Wednesday I will be very tired, but I also mm -hmm. feel pretty confident going into this series. Yeah, we got. Uh, I think I think as a Padres fan here, Jerry on YouTube says not true. The Padres were in a slump, but we have hitters in the whole squad. Uh, I'm just looking at the numbers throughout the throughout the season. It says they're I think they're 14th in the league in uh, in OPS, which tells you a lot because that tells you uh, you know how much you're uh, hitting the ball and how hard you're hitting the ball and how many times you're getting on base. So that that means something. Uh, our friend Ryan, we've had on the show before over at uh, Friar Farm Hands, Believe in Padres Prospects. It's a podcast you can check out on the internet. Um, Asked him for a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of like, a, you know, what, what's the state of the Padres right now to somebody who watches them as much as we watch the Dodgers. And uh, he, Ryan says, season's basically been about what we expected. They're super hot, super cold. They kind of landed about where they should be, where, where they 
thought, you know, the, I'm sure, you know, baseball writers all thought they were going to be, you know, have 100 wins by now or something like that because, right. well, yeah, that's what the media wants. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the guy here, Ryan, is saying um, pretty inconsistent offensively. Of course, we know the pitching is good. Uh, he says what a lot of people probably are going to feel that a lot of this of the Padres season is going to ride on the shoulder and the health of Fernando Tatis. And it doesn't take a genius or even a Padres fan <laughs> to assume as much. They don't have the depth to withstand losing their, their, their shortstop, their star player, their franchise player. Meanwhile, the Dodgers are always flush with depth and somehow have played without an MVP for most of the season. Uh, <laughs> the NLCS and World Series MVP for the last month or so Padres are good. They did what they could to to build up the depth and get a little ahead of it. They did a fantastic job in the offseason, but if they lose their star, they lose their their biggest spark plug, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's just, That's the way it is. And they're already five games back in first place, the three and a half games out of a wild card. Um, Ryan ends it with B-plus grades so far this season. <laughs> it says, watch out, though, if Snell ever remembers how to throw strikes. Oh, boy. Blake Snell is very bad. <laughs> yeah, we love you, Blake, Blake Snell. He is exactly, in the words of a very wise coach, we are who they thought they were. Um, Dan- Daniel Braun says, uh, speak phonetically for the Padres fans in the room. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. I like that. I love that. Um, yeah, I think uh, had Blake Snell been the guy that they were hoping he would have been, I think they would have been much better off. But also, you know, it's tough to win games when you're not scoring a ton of runs at the mm. right time. Trust me, we, we are Dodgers fans. We understand that. We score them at always the wrong times. Do like the matchups potentially this series, but they keep kind of sliding. Yeah, <laughs> they're not officially announced yet. At first, it went from a uh, uh, Darvish Musgrove, uh, Darvish Snell Musgrove, and then oh. it went from Darvish Musgrove Paddock. Yeah, and I mean, Paddock hasn't pitched since Friday, so I, I don't quite understand how, why they would move him past the Dodgers, except for the fact that they don't like throwing him against the Dodgers, and that's been proven time and time again because they keep sliding his spot in the rotation away from the Dodgers every time. The series I'm, comes. I'm telling you, it's you, man. He it's, knows. He every time he sees my he, face, he, he shakes. Hingle McTingleberry, uh, he gets uh, DM'd from uh, Paddock's uh, what is Agent it? Bro- brother, agent in law, agent in law, one and one of each. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it, all the pieces are there, man. My detective oh, work God, tells dude. me that he's a coward. If, <laughs> if by some miracle we do get to face Chris Paddock on Wednesday, oh my God. <laughs> I'm either going to be real, real happy or real, real upset. <laughs> See, it's going to go on. I mean, if you look at his stats, you go really, really deep dive into Chris Paddock's stats this year. He's he's doing some things a lot better, yeah. and he's doing other things a lot worse. So yeah. could really go either way. Because it's the Dodgers, it'll probably go a lot better for him because that's just how we do. Um, Joe Musgrove is the weirdest pitcher on earth. I don't quite understand him. He no. just has a ridiculous pitch mix and it's worked out for him so far because he's facing a lot of dudes that haven't seen him yet. Yeah. I think that eventually he will get just straight up shelled this year. Um, you Darvish, I mean, to be honest with you, this is the only game where I'm like, yeah, I'd probably lose this one. Uh, I think we'll take two or three from the series. I don't think we take this one tonight, personally. Mm. He has it. He has it. A rough patch for him this year. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's in his last four starts. I don't have the numbers in front of me. He has not been good in his last four, uh, four starts, uh, so that's a positive. But he also has been good against the Dodgers so far this year. I think 12 Gener- runs through like 25 innings or something like that in his last four starts. Uh, okay, that's bad. Yeah. I thought you were saying against the Dodgers. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Like one run. Uh, doubling back, uh, I've been missing. I've been wanting to get to uh, to uh, the talking walking keekster. Ooh. on uh, YouTube. Thanks for hanging out with us because he's, uh, they, this person, has been uh, really, really trying to slam, uh, not slam, but but just, I think they're a Padres fan and um, they're talking about uh, the Padres manager, Jace Tingler, uh, though talking, walking keekster says, that's why I don't have respect for Jace Tingler. A lot of Padres injuries have been avoidable. Of course, we know Clevenger's injury in the NLDS and Tati's shoulder early this year are great examples. Uh, I don't think he has as much care for the health as Dave Roberts does for sure so talking walking keekster if you're a Dodger fan I can see that side for sure uh Dave takes it to a ho nova level when it comes to making sure your healthy dudes or, or your dudes are staying healthy or your hurt dudes are going to stay healthy but um 
yeah, uh, I don't know how much of that is even coming from Tingler or if that's you know coming from front office or whatever the hell it is, but it's not always exactly pretty. Uh, you would imagine potentially that the Clevenger injury could have been avoided because you know you don't pitch through forearm tightness. It's just what you do not do. I've had a tight forearm before, did not pitch through it. We're going to see a lot more of those with the uh, the sticky ball stuff um, changing coming up. But uh, let's dig in for, for some of the answers, uh, some folks about the 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 meaning of this series. How do you feel? Have we already talked about what you feel? Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is one of those things where series? it's not big to me. I think every game is, you know. I wish we got Corey. I have the company answer where it's like very much a, hey, every game's the, important. The Seager answer. You want to win every game. Yeah. Like, why would you not want to win every game? I'm not going to assign more value to this one than the next one, but uh, I, you do want to win. You do want to win particularly a lot versus the Padres because it's just easier to shut people up, even though somehow, even when we're beating them all the time, like a lot, they still talk, talk, talk. Oh, we got you guys. Oh, you mother. Mm, you got swept in the playoffs and you they're, still talk shit. They're, they're new here, okay? They're new to this. The day after they got swept, they were talking shit. Uh-huh. The day after. I mean, I, I don't know what kind of cocky arrogance that is, but you got to really be confident in yourself as an idiot to be able to do that. I, too, am confident in myself as, as an, an idiot. idiot. Yes. Uh, saw one right here. Oh, Talking Walking Keekster confirmed they are a Dodger fan. Congratulations. You're 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 a good guy. Good good person. <laughs> uh Roach cares about as much as he cared for the Diamondback series. Ooh, they're gonna come get you. You're halfway there. Um Nope. Unintended says, Hey, Padres are leading this year. Okay. Leading, leading what? it. I am assuming they have oh, like one the series? more. Yeah, win? one more. Oh, congratulations, win. you're in third place. <laughs> so three and a half. I think years the Reds have more uh, wins games. against us than we do. I don't Ooh. know. <laughs> Reds are still in the league? Yeah. Not embarrassing. Um, moving on. Final final topic. This this show's gone on uh, long. Uh, Keegs changed their name and is a male. How did you do that so? That's fast? impressive. <laughs> Not even mad. I'm impressed. Oh, by the way, I, I you know what? I'm gonna go bold on the series. Going sweep. You're Dodger going sweep. sweep. Our sweep. I'm going Dodger we, sweep. We sweeps. I'm going bold. Re sweep. Re sweep. No, we sweeped. And then we're re-sweeping. Yes. We back sweep to back it, sweepies. Sweep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going around town cleaning up the joint. Cleaning yeah. up the NL West. I don't, I'm not Probably going to be, I'm definitely going to be wrong on this one, but I felt like a bold statement. You've been right about probably the last like five series. But we really got to like look. We really got to. I just kind of go off memory and I don't pay attention to anything. I don't even know what I say. Uh, and, yes, I uh, agree Lauren, with you. Lauren over on YouTube says the same thing. She says, I hope that's how it goes. <laughs> Big, big, big emphasis on the hope there. Lauren understands. Mm-hmm. Final topic is the one that's going to just never end, and it's going to get bad, and it's going to explode in everybody's face and potentially in everybody's elbow. We have entered officially the post-sticky era in baseball. Uh, we've talked about this at different points in time, different ways, different angles. Uh, I wanted to back up a little bit on it. And and kind of echo some thoughts of, of other folks that have already been out there. Um, the, you know, the quotes have been there. The videos have been released. I mean, obviously, Bauer's been uh, very uh, vocal about this one, but he's not the only guy who's an active player. Bottom line, MLB messed this up. Baseball, the league messed this up the way they always do. They just enjoy messing things up. But maybe it was sort of because they kind of had to. Um I'm going to throw here to friend of the show, first time first time guest, uh, one of my favorite guys, Mr. Rich Eisen. I'm going to have Rich set up this part. Baseball decided to come into the season and say, hey, we're going to crack down on it next year. We're going to use this year as a fact-finding mission, and pitchers started maybe taking that as a green light to use it as much as you want. Get in while the getting's good. And it got insane. To the point where baseball's like, we're going to do something about it this year. And I told you, Chris, that when the NFL ever makes an, a, a, a change on the emphasis of a rule already on the books in a season, it flips players and coaches out. 
because you should do it before the beginning of a season, right. and we're not going to change the way that we do things in the middle of a season because all of a sudden it dawns on you we should have done something in the off season, and baseball is going to do it now. And apparently they've given a whole bunch of a grace period to players to get off the stuff that they're using before they're suspended for it when they come down and decide now's the time we're going to start it. Jeff Passan of ESPN, who's on the show tomorrow, says that baseball's already told players, we're on to you. We've got you dead to rights, so stop using the stuff. If you're running the league, would you have done this in the middle of a season? No. I mean, I just don't. Oh, it's because you're not a dumbass. If you're looking at it, there is no way that you look at this and say, you know what, you had time to prepare for this. You built your team around this. You made sure that you had the right guys in place in order to to prepare for something like this. It's not like that. This is the equivalent of... Like you know, if you're playing in a, a, a stadium with a retractable roof, you yeah. get to bat with the with the roof open, and then uh, in the next half inning, when the other guys are coming up and the wind's blowing out, you get to close it so that they, they don't get that advantage. It's mm-hmm. a very similar circumstance where it's like, a, hey, we're just going to change up the entire playing field for you. We're, we know you were expecting one thing, but now we're not going to be able to do that, and you're going to change it mid-season. And when they say reasonable time, it's like I don't know who decided that. I don't know who said, you know what, roughly two weeks. That's a, that's a good date. Yeah. I think that's a good you know time frame for that. And they, there's always going to be questions about how long it was actually given to them. It sounds like when you talked to the players about it, like every player was like, we don't know. We don't know what's happening right now. We don't know when this is going to go into place. But there's been a lot of talk about it. And then all of a sudden it was, this goes into place on Monday. And it's like, okay, well that doesn't even sound like there no. was two weeks notice. It yeah. sounds like they were like, hey, just so you know, we're going to be doing this. And it's like, when? And they're like, we're doing it. <laughs> It's it's bad to do it uh, in the middle of a season, no doubt. You don't do that, but at the same time, it's bad because the league told players they weren't going to do anything. They were just collecting data. Same, I think I wasn't fully paying attention to what Rich said, but they were collecting data. This is, don't worry about it. Nothing's going to happen in the season. And then, boom, one, two headlines happen, and all of a sudden... MLB and Manfred can't handle it. They just they can't handle the negative national media, but they can take everything else when when you know I don't know when CNN isn't going to be on it or whoever you know insert major media uh, news network here if they're not talking about it, um, then it's fine. You know they can they can sweep things under the rug and it's not a problem, which is what they did with the sticky stuff for that for however many years. But now. You're telling baseball, you're telling the players, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to collect data, see what people are using. Nothing will change this season. Um, it, they messed up there. You lost good faith, uh, you know, some sort of good faith, uh, it, you know, with the league, you or with the, the the players and the players' association. You don't do that. You don't. Be, you don't go against, you don't renege on what you say and sell it as a, oh, we're just going to uphold the, the rule better. Well, you, you haven't been for this long. And now you're just going to do it, even though you said you're not going to do anything like this in season. But at the same time, like Rich is, was, uh, had mentioned or had said there, you, you also wonder if players were like, okay, well, they're going to gather data or whatever it is. They're going to see what we're using. Well, let's just effing load it up to all high hell, and then maybe we'll get something better. And it got too far too quick. Um, again, it's sort of the hall pass with that. Bauer talked about it, analysts, uh, insiders, all of that. Um, but, yeah, to, to me, the problem, and Bryant right here on, on uh, Periscope says the lockout is inevitable. That's the scary part. You, <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed baseball starting on time in 2021 <laughs> because baseball is – Without a doubt, absolutely not starting on time in 2022. There is no way. The league made this change. They they claimed they spoke to some players. They can they, they <laughs> Josh Donaldson. <laughs> I'm sure they watched some YouTube clips bitch. from Bauer or whatever the hell it is. Uh, uh, you 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 make this change months ahead of negotiations for the next collective bargaining agreement and you don't you don't talk to the the MLBPA about it nope. you don't talk to players so much about it you don't take into consideration that i would imagine a lot of batters say i have no problem with a little bit of tack don't use spider tack don't use whatever with that use use the shit you've been using the the, the pitchers have been using for decades on decades 
Bauer has also been pretty adamant online about there being a system in which you can consistently and regularly and efficiently pl- apply approved sub- substances mm-hmm. to a baseball beforehand. You can do them by the dozens before games. There's, I think, uh, the company that was doing it was like a brewery for their cans yeah, or something. Yeah. Like He's like, hey, you just have to fit it for baseballs. That's it. It can be done. Mm-hmm. You can do that. You can come up with a league-wide approved substance and then check for everything else if you want to. I don't care if you want to check for all the other things, but to tell a guy that, like, hey, I know we haven't ever told you about structures of baseballs being changed. I know we've done it 10 times, 20 mm-hmm. times, however much it's been. I know we've never officially told you about that, but now we're telling you that you can't do anything to to combat it. Where you yeah. can't do anything to be able to keep things consistent. You can't do anything to make sure that your movements, your mechanics don't have to change and that you won't get hurt. You can't do anything about it. You're screwed. You're under our command. Good luck to you this season. There goes Tyler Glass now. There's so many <clears throat> things wrong with what they're doing and it's mm-hmm. it's not going to go over well. And to do it in the shadow of the CBA expiring yeah. is just a real beautiful move by the league. I mean, if you want to talk about screwing yourself, the league I mean, they just put a, the the last nail in their coffin for this for the 2020 season. There's 2022 season. There's no I just no. cannot envision a world where these two sides get along. No. To have no. this many people outspoken against I the mean, league and what they're doing. To have AJ Pollock, the nicest man on earth, <laughs> say something negative about the league in his own way, it's it's a pretty big indication that yeah, there's probably something wrong here. Dave Roberts. Look, Dave Roberts even said something. Look look at look at the negotiation attempts last year trying to get the twenty twenty season started. How embarrassing, how bad, how terrible that was. It's not going to go well. Rich, uh, wrap it up for us. And there's a collective bargaining agreement around the corner. Mm, yep. And they're going to have to sit down and trust each other and get this thing hammered out. I am really concerned about a nuclear winter coming to this sport. Nuclear winter, be ready. It comes December 2021 where, uh, well, I don't think there's going to be a very happy MLB winter meetings. I don't think there's going to be very much player movement. We're all going to survive in baseball. Uh, it was nice to know you for about uh, you know, 120, 130 years. Maybe December's when we can start that uh, the office banter uh, podcast. Oh, there it is. Because we'll have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll get Gary in on that. Gary uh, used to be in corporate world, so we'll all talk shit about uh, corporate offices, and that'll be our uh, rebranding, uh, Blue Stapler. Blue Sadness. Blue Sadness. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll probably see you Thursday. Make sure you uh, find us on the internet. We're on DodgersNation.com. That's a place that's on the internet where there's a bunch of things about Dodgers and Nation. We're also a podcast. We are on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Pandora. Everywhere your podcasts are available for free, go ahead, go there, sign up. You're going to like it. Uh, hit us up on uh, the YouTube, youtube.com slash Dodgers Nation TV. Hit that notification bell. We'll be glad you did that. Steve Miller's in the chat. Whoa. Exactly. Guys, I'm at BrookMe3. This guy over here is at RealFRG. We're on Twitter and Instagram. We are at Dodgers Nation on Twitter at... Official Dodger Nation on Instagram, but we appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. We appreciate your your, uh, your questions, your comments. Thanks for hanging out with us. Chris Paddock sucks big butts. Uh, we'll see you Thursday. Bye.